Hey, I want to show you this really cool product by Elgato. It's the Stream Deck Pedal. It's really neat because you actually control the actions by pressing buttons with your foot. So we've got three main pedals here. We've got the middle pedal and we've got the two side ones. You can assign different things to different parts of the pedal. Now, let's have a look at the design, flipping it over right now. So we've got a nice uh, plating on the back there, nice and strong. We've got some rubber rings on the bottom to anti-slip and it won't slide anywhere. We've got a USB-C in the back, so a simple plug and play with a little light indicator to say it is working. Let's bring up the software. We've got the Stream Deck pedal software. You can assign different things to different buttons like streaming, screenshots, encounters, all sorts of stuff. I'm going to be using the encounters here with the pedal. So as soon as I see a Pokemon, I put my foot down and it increases the counters. Really, really cool for shiny hunting. If you want to check this out, the link's in the description of the video there and you want to press lots of buttons with your foot, I suggest you check this out with Elgato's other stuff. Link is below. What's up YouTube? We are back with the Random Egg series today. We're going to be getting some random eggs and doing some battles and some team building all in this video. The rules are there on the screen and let's get into it. So I went on my stream and I got six random eggs from six random people. Now what I'll be doing is I'll be doing a full team build on these eggs and then I'll be getting them battle ready and then I'll be doing some battles with them to try and get the dub or some really exciting content. I got a really cool bunch of Pokemon today and I actually got a bunch of different languages. I got English ones obviously. We had Korea, uh, French and Spanish eggs. That was pretty cool. So let's check out the Pokemon that I received. The first one was a shiny Kabuto which is absolutely awesome there and the next one we had out here was going to be a Sizzlipede, which is quite interesting, quite like Sizzlipede. Number three was going to be the Corefish, and number four egg was the Mudkip, so we got a starter this time. Number five is the Tyrant, and the finish off the eggs of six was the Milsery. So some interesting Pokemon. Let's have a quick little squiz at what they are. So just running through what my thought process was for each of the eggs, I didn't really receive any amazing moves. I got a couple of good nature on some, but other the Pokemon, I kind of got really bad nature on, like Mudkip, I got serious nature, so that was seriously bad. Milsery got an alright uh, nature, got, like special defensive with Sassy, no real good moves to work with there. Um, I was thinking about making that and maybe some bulky sort of uh, build there. Uh, with Kabuto, it was interesting because I had an Adam nature, so I was thinking about maybe making some sort of scummy set, and we have Brave nature, so I thought, well, that's good for a physical set for Sizzly Feed, and of course, we had Corefish. I made this, uh, it was maybe thinking into like a special one. So let's get into this one. We'll start with the Mudkip. Now, Mudkip, I thought we could make into a special Swampert. So firstly, I leveled it up, and it also got the Hydra Pump as well. I evolved it into uh, Marsh Stomp, and then I further evolved it into Swampert. So we had that right away here. This mainly is really good there, because you can get the, uh, obviously, the Luxury Balls, sell them uh, from your Watts, and get a lot of money, and then you can get all the vitamins, and then you get, the obviously, the candies from Raid. So it makes things very, very quick. So that was the Swampert there. Quick little look over the uh, Kabutops here. So I was thinking about giving this a Rock Blast Flint, set with King's Rock. I gave it max attack and max speed. The Swampert, I gave max health and max special attack too, just for the EV spread there. I didn't want to go too uh, involved in this. I just wanted to give you a brief little uh, rundown of what I did here. So next up, we have Tyrant. I gave it a Choice Scarf. I thought it'd be really cool if Horn Drill was a funny move and a couple other moves to give it uh, for its strong durability. Then we're looking at Milseria. As I said, I wanted to make like a bulky one. So I wanted to give it Calm Mind, but I couldn't give it to it because I didn't learn it. So I ended up making a Stored Power with Draining Kiss and really bulky defensive set uh, to tank like a lot of big hits. Uh, next up, we got Sizzly Pete in the center squad. This one, we're going to make it a fairly more of a generic set here, but it's going to be very bulky of uh, the uh, Assault Vest set, which is going to be very nice for our team. We got a big grass weakness, I noticed, on this team too, so that's why I made it Assault Vest. Next is going to be the Guillotine, another one hit KO move on the fraud on here. I made it into a special set, and I hope that I can get some pretty good uh, you know, recovery and uh, salt with it there. So I gave it max special attack and max health. Uh, this is the final team. Some amazing nicknames there and let's get into it. We've got two battles to this team. Uh, this is a random battle this against Laura, Laura Jean. I think that's how you say Interesting our uh, Pokemon card there as well. So the first Pokemon we got here is going to be the Espeon. 
I'm on an espionage mission, people, and it is a uh, uh, obviously a shiny espionage. My first Pokemon is going to be my little dinosaur, my Dino Drillo. We've got Bite, Dragon Claw, Horn Drill, and Thunder Fang, Max Attack, and Max Speed, and we've got Choice Scarf as the item. Now, I thought about going for a couple of bites. I was like, you know what? Let's roll a Horn Drill. It landed on the very, very, very first attack. And uh, ment ment mentally is going to be mental after that. So that's a very good start to the battle there. Bye bye, Espion. Now, the next Pokemon is going to be the Lapras. Uh, I think that's a. Uh, is that a French Lapras? I'm pretty sure. And this actually forced a Desperation Dynamax. Turn two of the battle. So that's, a good, that's the only good thing about one hit KO moves is the opponent does see you having them and then landing. Generally, a lot of time, it will force the opponent to Dynamax and use it up, like, really, really quickly. Uh, with the Lapras, it's going to be G-Max, and the bad news is it's actually going to be able to get that Veil up, which is going to be very difficult uh, to get around. So, Hordrill is obviously going to fail. Lapras is going to go for its G-Max resonance there, and that is enough of Tyrant. But Tyrant did an excellent job there uh, taking out that Espeon, you know, a fast special attacker there. You know, Magic Bounce, really, really good Pokemon. So the Aurora Veil is up, which really sucks, but there's not a lot I could have done about that. You know, Lapras is a uh, very, very good Pokemon. Now, the next one I'm going to send in there is going to be the Milsru there. Amazing name, by the way. My chat come up with some pretty good names there. So as I said, I've got a Max Health, Max Special Defense is there. I was thinking about this for a bit. I might be able to stall out Lapras completely with Milsuri on your Pinoche channel there. So it's going to go for a, uh, a Max Geyser there. I tanked that so well. So what I can do here is go for a cover again. So that's two turns of the G-Max Lapras. All I've got to do is live one more turn, and they've completely used up their Dynamax. They pretty much used up their Dynamax just to take out a Tyrant. So I, I feel that's pretty successful. So now they're going to go for a Max Lightning. That's clearly coming off like Thunder. I say that with Thunderbolt. That's going to be uh, obviously coming from a special Lapras. So they've got like, I don't know, like could be a variety of moves. Like it could be Blizzard, Ice Beam, Freeze Dry, uh, stuff like that. So going for my final recovery on Milsuri, and that's the end of the Lapras' G-Max, which is good. Now, I can't really do a lot of damage with this uh, Milsuri. I need to, you know, go for Acid Armor to even get some boosts on the stored power. Draining Kiss will do very little. So Lapras is going to have the Thunder. Here. Obviously, it's powered up by Electric Terrain, but that's not even going to scratch middle. This is so, so tanky. I thought about going for some more Acid Armors, but I really wanted the Lapras to actually swap out here. I went for Draining Kiss, did very, very little damage here. So I decided at this turn, I was like, well, I'm going to go for another Draining Kiss here, just see if I can see what the other moves Lapras has, and then I'm going to swap out. So I see that it's got Thunder and it's got Hydro Pumps. I'm like, they're pretty powerful moves. Uh, the Veil is gone too. That's also another reason why I kept it in. So Lapras is going to swap out and I swap out at the same time. So this was a very, very big threat to my team and that was going to be the Venusaur, right? So out goes the Milsuri and in comes Big Nips, which is going to be my Crawdon. Now this, as you remember, is a special set. Now I slid on a Guillotine and three special moves. Max Health, Max Special Attack. So we've got Scummy Water... Uh, Sludge Wave, Dank Pulse, and Guillotine. I've got the Bright Powder as the item. I was thinking about this for a while. Like, well, none of my moves are going to take this out. It's a massive threat. Let's roll the dice here, baby. So Venusaur's going to go for Sludge Bomb. I reckon they thought that I'd swap there. Still did a lot of damage. Guillotine is going to land on the very first go, and that's going to be the end of Venusaur. Man, those two one-hit, especially that one-hit KO move, that was a very, very important uh, like play right then. So that's the end of the electric terrain. Next Pokemon is going to be the Blastoise. Now, obviously, they're going to go for the, uh, you know, the, the the obvious Shell Smash Blastoise, which is incredibly like uh, uh, competitive and sweaty. So I was like, man, what do I do here? Do I swap? Do I go for Dank Pulse? I was worried that I wouldn't get any damage on them at all with the Guillotine Mist. So I decided to go for the Dank Pulse there uh, in the end. So Blastoise, of course, is going to go for Shell Smash. And I was like, is it got White Herb or has it got Focus Sash? It's mainly they carry White Herb. And White Herb is going to kick in and uh, heal up its stats. Now, here comes the Dark Pulse, and it actually does pretty good damage there. I'm assuming Blastoise thought that I'd be a physical set. Well, they wouldn't even probably have uh, realized I was going to be a, a special set with Guillotine. They're going to go for a Focus Miss. Quite a risky play right there, but it did land, and that is going to be the end of Crawdon. So I'd say they've got a Water-type move. Focus Miss, and I'd say, like, Ice Beam. Now we're going to go to uh, the Milsuri here, because I want to see what else I had. So here's the Hydro So we've got Hydro Pump, and we've got Focus Miss. So that's pretty much what I thought, right? This person tended to really pack those powerful moves on their Pokemon, from the Lapras to the Blastoise. So I went for Draining Kiss. It wasn't all that bad. I was a little bit worried here. They may try and go for another Shell Smash, but 
Uh, they didn't really know my entire Mills reset, so I guess they didn't really want to run that uh, risk there. That had already been trolled quite a bit already. So that's going to be the end of Mills That's pretty good. It stalled out their Dynamax Pokemon. Excellent performance. Next is going to be uh, the Center Scorch, which is Fruit Roll-Up. That's a big Fruit Roll-Up. We've got a Physical Assault Fest set. My only way to defeat the Blastoise, I was 3-4 down at the moment. Uh, the rest of my other two Pokemon could not actually deal with this. I had the Dynamax here. It was a very, very sweaty Blastoise set. So I've got Max Health and I've got Max Attack, Brave Nature, and I've got Assault Vest too. So this should be more than enough to live the Blastoise attack outside of a real, like, really big nasty critical hit. So here we go. I'm going to go for the Power Whip here, which is going to turn into Max Overgrowth. Blastoise has popped a Hydro Pump, and it's critted me. I was like, wow, that was crazy damage there. Almost one shot at me. If I didn't have the Assault Vest, it was all over Red Rover. Uh, that's going to be the end of the Blastoise right there. A couple of Mushrooms, and that is going to do the uh, trick right there. Thank goodness. That was a very threatening Pokemon. So the Grassy Terrain is up on the field, and that's going to benefit my Center Scorch, giving me a little bit of health. Now, unfortunately, I got critted there, so I took a lot more damage than I definitely would have there. I'd say the Hydro Pump would have done, you know, a little bit over half. Next Pokemon is going to be Charizard there. Unfortunately, it's not shiny, and it's going to obviously go for Air Slash or a Flying-type move. So all I've got here is Max Darkness. I was like, well, that's a two-hit KO. So go for Max Darkness. Here comes the Air Slash. Since I've got... Since I've got Dynamax and the Assault Vest, I actually live that one, which is awesome. And now I can get my attacking move off on the Charizard. And I almost took it out. I think I got a critical hit there. That critical hit didn't really matter all that much because I did have a Pokemon in the back which could essentially, uh, you know, quite easily beat the Charizard. So a little bit more health recovery and that's going to be the end of Fruit Roll-Up. But uh, MVP there taking out the Blastos, uh, you know, excellent performance there. I decided to do, instead of the uh, G-Max one, I thought I'd just use the normal one. So uh, we got two more Pokemon left and we got our Pickle Tops there. So it was a shiny Kabuto done on purpose, obviously, to troll me with a shiny Pickle one. And uh, yeah, we're going to call it Pickle Tops. So we got Rock Blast, Sword Dance, Leech Life, Waterfall with a King Throp. I've got Max Attack. And uh, we got max speed. So going for Waterfall here, that's going to be the end of Charizard. I, I could have one-shot a Charizard with either, either one of my moves there. So bye-bye, Charizard. Now we've got uh, Snorlax as the next Pokemon. So Snorlax is very, very bulky. Oh, it's also shiny too. So it could have Belly Drum, but I don't really know at this point in time. It's like, well, I could go for a Sword Dance here. I believe that I can leave every attack that Snorlax throws me. Uh, outside of maybe like an Earthquake critical hit. I've got Weak Armor as the ability as well. So now Snorlax is going to try and go for a Paralyze here with the Body Slam. Obviously, it doesn't have much else. And Weak Armor is going to kick in, and that's going to drop my defense by one stage and boost my defense, which is going to be by two, which is great. So that means I'm going to be out out speed, you know, the rest of the team. So now, which isn't too much because there's only Snorlax and Lapras left. So now I'm going to go for a Rock Blast here. I've got a plus two. Excellent damage to Snorlax. Look at that. So that's two hits there. Uh, that's going to be three hits there. I need four to five to take it out, and I only got three. But it's still all right. Now Snorlax is going to go for the Darkest Lair here. That does pretty underwhelming damage to Kabutops and another weak armor. So I feel like this Snorlax has everything invested in health. And maybe, like, I'd say health and special defense, if that was a guess. Uh, Snorlax has also got the leftovers as the item, too. But, you know, Rock Blast is going to be more than enough to actually take it out here. I just went for another one, and that's going to be the end of the Snorlax. So, excellent. Last Pokemon is a Lapras. I know that they've got Thunder uh, from down under, but it doesn't matter. I've still got another Pokemon in the back that could possibly, you know, definitely deal with this and just clean it up. So, go for Leech Life here. Leech Life gets excellent damage on the Lapras. Heals me all the way up and get this, people. I got a flinch on Leech Life. And straight away, as soon as I got that, as soon as I selected my move, they hit the cancel button. And uh, that was it, people. There was a little bit of a rage quit right there. Hope you enjoyed the very first battle with this team. Thank you, uh, Laura, Laura Jean, Marjorie, for the battle there. Let's get on to battle number two. This is against uh, Kristen. And this was an interesting battle as well. This person's the team was really, really good, uh, like the other person. So I was very happy with how that uh, first battle went, you know. I, granted, I did get a lot of luck, but man, they still had some very good Pokemon. So first Pokemon we got is Incineroar. We're leading with the big nips here because, you know, it was a pretty MVP last battle. So we got Intimidate. They probably think I'm just running a physical set. Uh, they're going to go for the little Incineroar fake-out chip damage there. Not going to do as much, probably as much as I thought because I'm running max health. Incineroar's going to be swapping out into Sableight. It's a good thing I didn't go for 
the guillotine. I went for scummy water instead. Now, I'm guessing they're probably going to be running some sort of Willow Wisp prankster set, uh, which is not going to work anyway because I'm a dark type. So, scummy water does excellent amount of damage there. I even get to actually drop, which is amazing. Uh, the Sableye has got the leftovers as the, uh, obviously, the item. So, they really can't do a lot here. They just swapped into a, you know, a pretty powerful attack. I'd say they've been running something like Max Health, Max Defense, and Sableye is nowhere going to be able to live that. So, Special Crawdon is doing awesome at the moment. Next Pokemon to come in here is going to be 69 Tails. Now, the only reason why they swapped this in, there's only two reasons. To get the Sun up, to power down my Water-type moves, and to use a Grass-type move. Now, Nine Tails have got two primary Grass moves, which is Solar Beam and Energy Ball. Uh, Energy Ball hits me very hard there. I knew that it was coming, but I couldn't swap out, so I went for Guillotine. It's landed on Nine Tails and taken it out. Man, that was really, really good there. So Big Nips is the MVP so far, taking out some very, very good Pokemon. And of course, we've got a Venusaur as well. So like, man, we had to deal with one in the first battle. Can we deal with it in the second battle? Watch this though. This is only your pin drive show. So Venusaur is going to go for a sword then, right? So it's got a plus two on attack. I'm thinking, man, this is risky. So Guillotine misses. Like, man, I'm done. I'm done, right? Then it uses C-Bomb. Bright Powder kicks in. I was like, what? And then the Guillotine, right? It lands. But, but watch, right? It lived on like one health because it had a Focus Sash. A Focus Sash Venusaur, right? But that, it doesn't end here, people. It doesn't end here. Now the C-Bomb's going to land. That's the end of my car, Crawdon. So I'm like, man, that was the excellent effort there by Crawdon. Like, that was amazing. So I thought, well, you know, it's only got one health left. I only have to uh, tank this hit, which I believe I can badly with uh, the little mill sweep. Then it uses my favorite healing move there. So Focus Sash and that at the same time. Like, you wouldn't read about it. So I went for a stored power. It had about one base power there, and that's going to do about one damage to Venusaur. So now things are looking very bad. You know, Venusaur's got a lot of its health back, and now it's going to heal itself up again. So things are not looking good here. I don't know what exactly I can do to this Venusaur. I'm thinking there's one Pokemon I can do maybe to try and stall this out. So I'm going to go for Acid Armor right here, boosting my defense. That was excellent. Now Venusaur is going to go for a G-Max. It's quite funny that uh, uh, Venusaur G-Max on quite, you know, in both battles when you think about it, you know, the opponent Dynamax with their Lapras against my Tyrant, their baby little Pokemon. And now Venusaur is going to be G-Max against my... Um, it gets my meals for it's quite funny these little baby Pokemon draw drew out these uh you know those sort of uh, actions in battle so now Venusaur is going to go for his uh, G-Max Vine Lash here I think they expected to take me out in one shot but they didn't the only reason they are is because of uh, G-Max's Vine Lash's uh, you know effect there so I went for another Acid Armor I probably should have gone for a cover but of course I didn't know they were going to G-Max you know hindsight is uh, very very easy so that's the end of Mill Street but once again a solid solid performance of actually tanking out Dynamax Pokemon um, you know, so next Pokemon's gonna be Fruit Roll Up. This is it. I have to Dynamax this right now. If I lose Fruit Roll Up now, I'm done. Once again, I'm in a position where I have to Dynamax this Pokemon. So I've got Max Flare and the Sun is up, so I might as well Dynamax it and take out this Venusaur. So I've got a physical set, so it's gonna hit it very, very hard too. Now, so far, we've only seen Venusaur use a Seed Bomb, which is gonna be Max Over it. Now, when you run a physical Venusaur, you always want to be able to hit steel types because they love to come in. So I'm like, well, if they've got a, a good coverage set, they'd have Earthquake for Max Quake. If they don't, they don't. It's going to do nothing. So of course they've got Max Quake, and I can bet you that is definitely going to be Earthquake. And it does excellent damage to my center score. So it's definitely Earthquake. So it had uh, you know four type, uh, two attacking moves on that set. So I went for my Max uh, Max Flare here on the Venusaur. As the sun is up, it's going to be able to take it out, and that's the end of Venusaur. Thank goodness, that's a very threatening Pokemon. So we had the Venusaur, G-Max, and Ninetale. So don't tell me how I got past the, these Pokemon with um, you know, how weak my team was to grass. So that's the end of the sunlight, which is great. I only have one more turn left. Now, the next Pokemon to come out of here is going to be Incineroar. So like, okay, uh, it's got the Intimidate, so they're going to make, obviously, full use of that. Fake Out's not going to work because I'm in Dynamax. I need to get as much damage off as I can here. So let's have a look at my little move options. I've got Max Flutterby. That's it. You know, like, it's, it's a thumping base power, but after Intimidate, it's not really going to do all that much. Now, Incineroar is going to probably go for a Fire-type move or Darkest Lared, and it's going to go for Flare Bits. Flare Bits fails to take me out there. 
Um, I got some great recall damage on top of that. So, that, okay, that makes up for the Intimidate, you know. Um, I might be able to, you know, almost take this out. And, you know, it's about on a uh, quarter health there. Very, very close. So, excellent performance there by Santa Scotch. Uh, now, this will take me out with its uh, attacking move there. I got hit also by the Vines, too. Instead of attacking me with Flare Bits, they went for Darkest Lariat. And that's going to take me out. Obviously, conserving uh, some more health on Incineroar. Now, I've got my Kabutop still, which will easily be able to take this out and outspeed it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go into that. So I've got Waterfall. This this is 100% actually. I also have Rock Blast, but I didn't want to make, like risk missing and stuff like that. So that is going to be the end of Incineroar. I did roll, um, sort of think about uh, roll the dice and maybe try and get a weak armor to outspeed stuff, but in the end, I went against it. Next Pokemon is going to be Steelix here. Steelix is a threat. I could go for Waterfall here, but I, I, I know that Steelix is going to be able to eat that like a snack. It's probably going to be like a 2-3 to three hit KO. And now it's going to go for Earthquake. So not only did I dodge a Earthquake, um, I actually dodged something very, very important. The Pokemon you haven't seen yet, it's going to be uh, Big Papa Pup. And that's the uh, <laughs> that's the Swamp Bet. So we got a Supersonic Throat Spray set, Hydro Pump. And we've also got Ice Beam and Earth Power. So going for the Hydro Pump on the uh, Steelix right here, it lands, which is quality. And it doesn't take it out. It lifted. I was like, man. Uh, so now Steelix has got Weakness Policy. So if you can imagine, if I went for the Waterfall on the Steelix, it would have got Weakness Policy. So that would have been bad. Weakness Policy, Toxic. I, I wouldn't have expected that. I thought they'd go for an attacking move. But I guess they thought that I'd probably go for maybe Stealth Rock or Waterfall and then have a little bit more time. But that's going to be the end of Steelix right there. Last Pokemon is going to be Latios here. Now I thought, well, I could go for Ice Beam here, but that wouldn't be any fun. Let's go for Super Sonic. Now the... This is, where the, this is where that decision was really bad. Latios went for a trick. It gave me a Choice Bex. I could have gone for a Choice Bex Ice Beam, but I decided to go for Super Sonic. It'd be a, it'd be a smart ass, but it didn't work out. Uh, now Latios is going to go for a Psyshock Shock. That does heaps of damage. I'm able to live that. Uh, I'll be a big pop a pop. And Psychic, I'm oh, sorry, the Psy Shock hits me hard. And uh, unfortunately, the Super Sonic does miss again. And that is the end of my Swampert. Man, it wouldn't have been any fun if I didn't try it, right? So bye-bye Swampert. Next Pokemon is going to be Pickle Tops. Now, I've got the perfect move here. I'm going to go for Leech Life. Leech Life will sustain me. I know that I'm going to get outspeed here. And Psy Shock does a pretty good amount of damage to me. But I'm going to be able to get a lot of the health back, right? And it's a clean, uh, you know, two-hit KO. So Leech Life, heap of damage there on Latios. The next hit is going to take it out. And I'm going to get all of my health back practically. So the next Psy Shock is going to fail. They've got their Desperation Draco Meteor here. And that is going to be enough to take out Kabutops. My last Pokemon here is going to be my Tyron. And that is the Choice Scarf set that I was running uh, earlier on with the Horn Drill. Now, I've got Bite on that. And I've got Dragon Claw. That'll easily be enough to take it out. But will I be able to outspeed it? That's the question. And I'm not. They're going to go for Draco Meteor again and take me out. I could have won that battle there if I went for Ice Beam, but I didn't want to. I wanted to try and get the Super Sonic. But uh, anyway, it was a really good battle. I hope you enjoyed it. Some fun things there. I'll be back tomorrow for another video. And that's about it. Peace out, people.